Hello and welcome to a new episode of Another Angle. My name is Abby and I'm on a mission to help our listeners learn about ways on how to improve their health, their fitness and their overall well-being. We will be joined by guests and specialists from sectors like medicine, nutrition and fitness who will be bringing you the latest advice and the latest trends in what's happening in today's world. Thank you very much for joining us today. To start with, who is Lucy? Who is Lucy? So Lucy is a, I am an accredited psychological life coach. I worked, so, you know, I was really aligned with your business. So my background is in the NHS. So I worked in the NHS for seven years in specialist hospitals um, as an assistant psychologist delivering assessment and therapy. And last year, I took the leap, I left the NHS, and I went self employed and set up my own coaching practice, which is what I'm doing now. And my aim, so what's Lucy sort of aim, so my aim with my coaching practice, I try and help my clients, but I do help my clients to become masters of their mind. So that is my mission. It's to help them to become masters of their mind, to get rid of any self-limiting beliefs, to bring these self-limiting beliefs into their conscious awareness to the things that are holding them back in life and giving them the tools and strategies to be able to navigate their mindset. So that is kind of me and my work in a nutshell. (laughs) I love it. I love it. You know, like it's something that I actually strongly uh, believe in that this type of knowledge, it's, it's kind of a knowledge that a lot of people really don't get for whatever reason during their life that your mind is the main factor that you can actually take control over. And it is the sole contributor to whatever you actually go about doing in life. I think there is a quote from Napoleon Hill who says, Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Yeah. So I truly believe in that. And um, I feel this, this, this podcast is going to be really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me, how, how, how did you reach to that point where it's now your mission in life? I think I reached that point from doing years, you know, as a therapist and delivering therapy and really realizing what a beast the mind is can be and what a difficult thing it can be to navigate and really how it can sort of take over control of our lives so especially with anxiety and low moods I worked with people who were suicidal at the time so I guess my mission and as I was working as a psychologist and I became more and more self-aware and understanding how to navigate my mind was to be able to give that gift to others. So it's not something that, can, that has to rule you. And there are tools and strategies that you can use to be able to become the master of your mind and for it not to control you. So my question is, was this something that you've always been interested in? Into like, was psychology your thing since you were like at school? Or was it something that was there kind of a major highlight in your life that said, OK, you know what? I want to dig into this field. It's really interesting. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. I want to learn more about it. And from there, your passion to help others uh, kind of evolved. I went to a selective all girls, in brackets, toxic school (laughs) Um, that was very academic. And as I was growing up and sort of going through the system, I didn't really find my thing. I wasn't the brightest girl in the class even then when I talk about self-limiting beliefs I formed limiting beliefs then around my capabilities and abilities and how clever I was and I got to A level and psychology was an offering I took it up and I just felt so in flow with it I was so interested in the subject and therefore like I excelled in it I had to be very motivated (laughs) to do something and when I do I run with it And so I took that on and I've always been a people person. One of the teachers said that to me at school. He said, you might not be the Oxbridge type, Lucy, but your gift is working with people and how intuitive you are and how perceptive you are. And so I think I really harnessed that gift. I took that on. I love psychology. I then went and did it um, as my degree. I then went and did it as my master's, um, got work experience in hospitals and then built my career from there but I don't know if you've had anyone else in psychology on the podcast before it's a fiercely competitive field 
a fiercely competitive build. And it can be daunting at times as well because you need to stay on a, on a level where you're always uh, managing all that kind of uh, overloads, uh, emotional overloads sometimes from clients or from other people and just be able to recenter, I think, on daily basis. Yeah, I think that's so important. And I think you learn strategies to manage that on the job. And with all psychologists, you have to have supervision from a more senior psychologist. So when I started out, I worked in a cancer hospital, you might be familiar with it, the Royal Marsden. So I was at the Royal Marsden for about three and a half years. And that was my first step in the door. And my first step in the door, I was dealing with I worked in paediatrics, I worked with children and young people, and I was having people that were passing away on my caseload. I was dealing with a lot of grief. And so it is then so important to be able to have that supervision and that time with the consultant clinical psychologist. So in that field, I was having that every week. And that's like your your hour space, your hour space to reflect on cases, you know, to share anything if there's anything you're finding particularly difficult and to learn how to build your resiliency and also detach and trying to detach from these people's stories and these people's trauma. And over the years, you have obviously developed a lot of uh, expertise in different niches. So I was reading your bio and I can see that you have received training in CBT, so cognitive behavioral therapy and, uh, and mindfulness as well. So over these years of practicing, have you kind of developed any special interest in any type of uh, niche? Yeah, it's so interesting. I'm really working on my niche at the moment. My caseload is so broad. I was on a podcast recently and asked this question, and it's really difficult to sort of underpin the client that I work with. I definitely think it's around someone who wants to sort of gain self-awareness. Um, and learn how to navigate their minds but with that you know I have international businessmen I have younger clients that I mentor sort of young adults and I think the bulk of my clients fit with professional women who want to build on confidence and self-doubt thing I think my absolute my real area of interest is in neuroscience so I worked in neuroscience services at Guys and St Thomas's Hospital I was there for about four years and worked in the field of autism. And I'm fascinated by autism. I loved working with autistic clients. I found my interest for all things neuro during my degree. So that's my specialism. And I think with most of my clients, there's always some sort of like complexity to the case, which is what I like to work with. I like complexity. I like a challenge. So it's difficult to underpin. I think my my real interest is in neuro but in terms of my caseload and what I work with at the moment it's still pretty varied. Would you see there is a way for you in the future to combine these two together? Yeah I have I have my ideas my side hustles. Okay. <laughs> I'd love to, I'd, yeah I'd really I would like to. You can drop an announcement now you know like <laughs> people can yeah it's, we're, we're more than oh happy God. to do the I'd have you here half an hour honestly <laughs> it's like business plan after business plan coming up in my head. Go um, for it go for it love to hear it. Maybe you know autistic coaching for autistic people maybe it will be something that I would like to go into in the future um, as the side but at the moment I'm really um, focusing on sort of my one-to-ones and starting to to niche that out Um, and I've just joined a new platform which is incredible called Arla and it's a community for women who have experienced um, trauma or discrimination or abuse. And I've literally joined that platform in the last week. So I'll be channeling my efforts very much into that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that there is going to be a rise in members joining these platforms because of obviously the current situation and the current pandemic. And uh, it's going to leave a lot of people um, distorted, Absolutely. Uh, the least we can say about it. So. So how do you see people moving out of the pandemic into this post-SARS-CoV-2 type of era? How do you see people will be will be then? Is it a bright future? Is it like something that would basically spot more light on these issues? Or do you think that we will have a higher hill to climb in order to go through after this pandemic have, have finished? Yeah, it's, that's a really, it's a really good question and something that I've been um, sitting on, especially thinking about sort of my clients and their needs I think this is it's been a crazy time I mean none of us could have predicted um, what we are going through right now and I think it really shows how resilient we can be as human beings I think often we tend to sort of overestimate um, 
the risk or a problem and sort of under, underestimate our ability to cope. And when I was helping my clients initially and supporting them with this change and all the anxieties that were coming up for them then, it's been incredible to see how they've adapted. But as you've sort of just brought through our awareness and what I've been thinking of, I think it's going to be very difficult now we've sort of adjusted to this strange new normal to now expect ourselves to be able to adjust back into our normal life and to be able to go out in the future and socialize with people and go back into working in office environments when we've just adjusted to working from home so it's a huge transition again you know the original transition into lockdown was massive but it's another huge transition and I think for a lot of people that would be that'll be a really difficult thing to adjust back to and will generate quite a lot of anxiety and I'm very ready to support my clients with that transition so I think that's one side but the other side is I think despite how horrendous this time has been for people I think it's also been some good to come out of it and I say that very sensitively you know depending on what people's circumstances during this time but I think it's really given us time as a nation to reflect and to reconnect with ourselves and I've been very fortunate and I've had so many more client inquiries during this time because I think people are just giving themselves that space now to be able to be more reflective and more introspective about what's going on with them what they want to achieve what they might need support with so I think that's been a really great time for us to pause we're always on the go and on high alert and super restless and we've really been forced now to slow right down and I know for me particularly it's been a blessing a real blessing to have this period to slow down and I think with that as well you know it's been a chance for us to be more grateful for things and to really lean into that gratitude and when we're we immerse ourselves back into the real world we'll have a real you know real sense of quality of the things that we're actually able to do and the things that we were we took for granted beforehand you know going for drinks with friends going to eat at nice restaurants whatever it is whatever is your thing so it's a real spectrum I think I think it's a really great question but quite a difficult answer I think you know there'll be a struggle for sure but also I'm hoping that there's going to be some good for us as human beings to come from this period yeah absolutely I think you're absolutely right Uh, and the fact that we are becoming as a population more introspective in terms of uh, learning the tools on how to take control over our emotions, how to handle stress, especially that there's a lot of stress around now, yeah. and yeah. learning how to mediate and keep that healthy type of work-life balance. All these things are becoming more apparent. So what kind of measures have you set in place? I think when it comes to psychology and CBT therapists and all these type of professional services that are delivered on that side, I feel that every professional, they they come to develop some sort of approach Mm. to share with their clients. So what is Lucy's approach to to get people to take more control over their emotions? I really integrate the training that I've had. So like you said, I've I've received training in CBT, um, mindfulness. I've done some training on systemic therapy. Like you name it, I did it during, during my time in the hospital. And now obviously done my coaching qualification. And I like to draw on lots of different models. I think coaching and CBT are probably the models that I draw on the most. So my approach is very solution focused. So it's very much, okay, you're here now and a client comes to me, this is your current reality. Where do you want to get to? Where do you want to get to? And we we take you there rather than sort of traditional counselling or therapy methods, which might look into the past and really sort of explore a problem and I think I have the skills to to sort of know and can see where patterns of behavior and thought are coming up from the past and we can do a little searching there but it's very much looking into the future and I find that very empowering for my clients a lot of the time they don't want to go there they want to better themselves um, and look into the future and it makes it more exciting so I think that's very much my approach is very very solution focused yeah, i love that I, I think one of the things that us as humans are blessed with i think as humans we have a lot of blessings that we've been uh, born with one of which is forgetfulness yeah and i feel this is a huge strength for a lot of people to use and apply in situations where a change is needed where they might not see the light at the end of the tunnel, but with the right support, they might see that light. And it's all about building that confidence in them to make them understand that that you can walk it through and you can get to that end. And that's what you should only be focused on rather than just 
trying to dig in the past and try to understand the cause and trying to understand what led you to that point, which could be important in the beginning of that journey. But I think that's something that people should be doing on their own. Mm. I feel that it's sometimes more helpful if the person comes to that conclusion themselves. Some people might not be able to do so. Um, yeah, sure. But yeah, absolutely right. I think having um, these sessions around the future and what could be done could be more uh, fruitful and beneficial for the receiver because they are there and they are at your practice to get better as quickly as possible. Yeah. I feel that this is the thing that a lot of people are actually looking for. They, they want to get better now. Yeah. And uh, of course, there's no magic bullet, but um, yeah, I love your approach. So would that be as well like the same way that you would also try to help your clients or your patients to on how to handle stress or would your approach be different on that side? I have like my toolkit (laughs) so I have many tools um under my belt and obviously it always depends on sort of the client's presentation and what they're coming to me with but I think the stress a lot of my clients that I work with are real high achievers real high achievers and with that can evoke a lot of stress and I think particularly during this time with everything that's going on I think our emotions are really heightened so we're feeling anxiety a lot more strongly in our bodies we're feeling more overwhelmed we're feeling more stress and my strategies around stress I suppose divide like classic CBT into kind of the thoughts but also how do you cope with the sort of physiological sensations in your body so with stress and thoughts and overwhelm I really try and equip my clients to become observers of their thoughts And to really sort of like tune in into what is the thought? Because most of us, I think it's something like 70% of our thoughts are repeated daily. So we tend to just sort of ruminate over and over again on the same thought. So to really shift our attention onto what that thought is that's causing them stress. And then I sort of take them through tools to be able to think a bit more flexibly. So asking themselves, you know, what is the thought? Is this thought serving me right now? Sort of holding on to this. Um, and what would be the benefits or what would it mean if I let that go? So that might be something that I do with the thoughts. But what complements that beautifully is to kind of work around things like meditation and affirmation to make that even more powerful. To, so to be able to equip my clients to become more observers of their thoughts and to detach from the thought. Because, as you know, our mind races. It races all the time. It's just what thoughts do. They're constantly popping into our heads. So it's learning when you're overwhelmed how to manage that. And the most simple strategy, it's the breath. It is like the brain's reset mechanism to be able to just sit and take some really deep breaths and to try and sort of soothe your body. And I know that you're medical, so I'm sure you're well aware of the sympathetic nervous system and the activation of that when you're feeling stressed and it's that real feel of adrenaline in our body, our cortisol levels rising and that is the best way to soothe it in the moment. Soothe it in the moment is to do that breath work or to take yourself outside, you know, whatever you can do to sort of shift up your environment and come to yourself at that time. So definitely meditation. I love meditation. I do meditation every day and to um, incorporate some affirmations into that breath work like you were saying you know the power of mindset so to being able to shift your mindset so a classic affirmation I say to my clients to use is when they're breathing is that they say to themselves I'm breathing in relaxation and I'm breathing out tension and really focusing on that exercise helps you really find that that inner calm and that inner zen that you need in the moment fantastic so those would be some things that I would do (laughs) <laughs> it's really interesting because like I'm someone that I'm actually fascinated by the work of speakers like Tony Robbins for example like he's one of those people that actually uh, advocates for affirmations but like coupling it with actual with action you know it's more about um priming yourself and putting yourself in that mindset to really be able to uh, to handle stress and be able to execute on it uh to to use it sometimes to your own benefit uh, mm. uh to keep to keep pushing you to do uh, to do more of what actually brings you that inner peace at the end of the day but yeah i agree i think i think for for me i kind of developed this kind of um i actually didn't develop it. i think i've heard it somewhere and it's just like stuck in my mind for a long period of time now where it says that it all starts with the thought because the thoughts that you have in your mind influences your action yeah your action becomes your habits 
and your habits at the end of the day becomes who you are. Yeah. So if you want to be like this person who would always be overwhelmed or if you want, then your thoughts have kind of been the root cause that have been mm. uh, influencing that whole journey. But if you develop the skill to spot that thought and be able to change it or look at the positive side of it, then you would definitely be on a different path that would bring you more uh, tranquility, I would say. Definitely, definitely. You mentioned meditation uh, being useful. So there's a lot of enthusiasm about meditation that has been on the rise over the past few years. But don't you think that meditation in its core element is just another form of, of that kind of mood of prayers that I think humans have been having in their, as part of their lives since ages ago? Do you think that religion as a I, I know I know like we might be drifting a little bit away from psychology. <laughs> where are we going it's, 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 I need to get my... I, would love, I would love to know your thoughts about this because it's something that I always actually think about I feel I, I truly feel that it's it's something that is ingrained in our innate system or in our innate psychology that we need to have that time to ref, to self-reflect mm. and people have been opting to religion as a way to exercise that mm. So yeah, I think uh, I think it's more of a biological need than than anything that we that we actually going for these type of sessions per day. Some people do it once a day, some people do it once a month, some people might never do it. Yeah. But do you think they, they kind of correlate or do you think that meditation is completely different from these kind of times or, or is it dependent on how you do these prayer sessions? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. There, there's also the element of group sessions where you're actually meditating that actually have been shown to be of of benefit to a lot of people and we saw we see that we see that not just in religion some religions but also in yoga sessions as well where where groups of people when they actually gather together they might have that kind of collective benefit on everyone rather than just doing it on your own I think there's multiple components to it. So I think, I, so I, when you were saying that, I was thinking the collective, like the power of the collective and a group, like you were saying with yogis or, you know, as religion and as um, the identity that brings up that collective identity is really powerful for human beings and social psychology and sort of the formation of groups. We like to be a part of an in-group. So I think that's really interesting, sort of that area of it and the power of, the coming together and I guess it is a practice it's a practice isn't it so I don't you know whether that's I guess that's kind of feeding into sort of the um religious terminology but I think the importance of meditation for people is for them to do it in a way that suits them and I think for a lot of people uh, they're put off by meditation because they think it needs to be much more involved than it actually does i'm actually a supporter of this i feel meditation without having an infused sense of belief whatever that belief is whatever that belief is i feel like the feeling of belief when it's coupled with these meditation sessions i feel that's where the truth strength come in and that's where the benefits would actually start to crystallize yeah because you're strengthening that belief, whether it's in yourself or in like whether it's like in some 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 invisible power yeah. or whatever it is, you know. When it's when it's coupled together, I think that's um, that's an approach to self discovery in its most basic element, but also to stop and pause and try to to look at other things. Yeah. You've kind of centered. You've kind of went to your center, and now you're actually reflecting on the outside. You're not introspectively now looking at things, but actually looking at it looking at things from from the outside as well yeah it's a very exciting field to be honest i really envy you for having the that kind of uh, liberty to actually explore it more and then to be involved in it in, on daily basis but really well done on, on that it's really great uh, and i've been seeing your your instagram account i see i yeah. think that you have a lot of great content out there as well oh that's very kind i'm doing my guided that is something that's coming i'm putting together i've had lovely feedback on my guided meditation so i'll be putting together a guided meditation pack which will be going up on my website because I think people just really need it now people really need the guided meditations and creating that stillness for themselves and I think guided meditation um, for beginners especially is just more accessible rather than you know you having to create that stillness and then go and meditate and most people are like how the not going to swear how 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 on earth do I do this how on earth do I do this so actually being guided through it and when I do my guided meditations I really incorporate tools in there so whether that's 
dealing with anxious thoughts or like how to get to bed if your thoughts are racing you feel overwhelmed so I really try and make them accessible for people and time poor people as well I keep them nice and short <laughs> that's 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 really great because like right nowadays we see uh we see a lot of people on our social media so my last question for you is as we are all on our social media mm-hmm. more or less like most of the time nowadays yeah it's quite important for a lot of people now is just to use that time to actually be able to better themselves. Yeah. So what kind of advice would you give to people who are now looking into meditation and to actually go through the difficult times to be better people or to just find solutions to the things that have been bothering them over the past years of time? I think starting by following, if you're using it around social media, sort of following Instagram accounts that really like inspire you and excite you and resonate with you. I think there's a lot of negatives to social media, which I'm sure, you know, we're very aware of with sort of comparison and scrolling and all that kind of thing with social media. But there's also some really great accounts there. And I think if you've got an interest in self-development, there are some really fab accounts that do lots of mantras. So I do that on my Instagram every Monday. I post really empowering mantras to try and shift your mindset and sort of start that work for people. So I think that's a really good start. There's obviously great podcasts out there that you can listen to, um, including this one, but include uh, other podcasts for your self-development and great books and great self-help resources. And I think that's sort of your entry level in into personal development and bettering yourself. And if you can implement sort of strategies from there and start to see a change, the power then of working with a coach and having then that more intensive experience of your potential really is is limitless so I think for social media you know search search for terms search for self-care search for personal development search for personal growth and find some really inspiring accounts because it's much better to scroll through that than some other stuff that's out there (laughs) I think one of the best analogies that I've ever heard about mindsets and how to actually uh, self-develop is is looking at the mind as a as this piece of land that you can either neglect it and just let anyone to just throw anything into it or you might just like take care of it by nourishing it and watering it and taking care of it through the thoughts that you actually inject into it and that would be as simple as changing the the look and the feel of your feeds yeah and uh, and having it more filled with uh, with more relevant stuff yeah cultivate it into a space that empowers you i mean if anyone listening to this just wants an activity this evening go through and cull accounts that no longer inspire you make it something that you open and it's only going to be like a positive, empowering experience for you. That was a game changer for me. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic stuff. Thank you so much, Lucy. It was a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Another Angle. We hope you found some useful information in today's podcast. Feel free to share it with your loved ones. And please do let us know in the comments which areas or topics you would like us to discuss next. We would love to deliver that right knowledge right to you. Stay safe.